إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone how is everyone are we ready and excited for another day of learning how to improve and beautify our salah inshallah Yes, great. Alhamdulillah, amazing. May Allah allow us to grow closer to him uh, through our salah and our other good deeds so that we can be considered from among those who love him and Amen. most importantly, those who he loves. Subhanallah, Amin. All right, so most of us would be fasting today. Yes. So let's see what is one of the many benefits of performing this act. Alhamdulillah, I'm very good too. Jazakallah khairan for asking. So Uthman ibn Athaqafi said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Fasting is a shield against the fire, just like the shield of any one of you against fighting. So subhanAllah, this analogy is quite easy to understand in terms of the shield, right? Because a shield is a weapon. It's something that protects a person from getting hurt. And just like that, fasting, it's a shield, it's a barrier that protects a person from hellfire itself. So then who wouldn't want to increase in their shields, in their protections against the fire, right? So next time you're fasting, make sure you approach your fasting with this mindset. that if I am fasting for the sake of Allah, inshallah, it will act as a shield against hellfire for me. And look at this beautiful hadith about the importance of salah. Ubada said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, there are five prayers which Allah has prescribed on his servants. If anyone offers them, not losing any of them and not treating them lightly, Allah guarantees that he will admit him to paradise, to Jannah. SubhanAllah, so we want to enter Jannah, yes? So let's not take our salah lightly. Let's not miss any of them. Let's be serious about them and inshallah try to perfect them. Because it is a promise from Allah that if anyone does that, okay, then they then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit him to Jannah. Okay. Um, now before we go on, there are just a few um, conditions before salah for our information and to be aware of. Because um, we might fulfill most of them anyway, but let's see what they are. Okay, so intention, having the niyyah of which salah you are performing. And it doesn't have to be verbal. You don't have to announce it that, all right, I am praying three rak'ah of maghrib, da -da -da, not like that. Okay, just in your heart, make sure you are aware of what you are praying. That's the niyyah. Okay, and then the qibla, make sure you are facing the right direction. Yep, not the opposite, not tilted somewhere else. The right direction is necessary for our salah. And then the time of salah. Yes, we know that we shouldn't delay our salah and you know miss it, but also we shouldn't pray it earlier than its required time. Maybe if you have to leave the house really quickly and the asr is in 10 minutes. So you're like, oh, I can't wait 10 minutes. I'll just quickly pray now and then that's done. That's not correct because the time of salah needs to have done. The, the adhan for asr needs to have been called before you can actually pray that asr or maghrib or whichever salah. And then the awrah needs to be covered, right? For males and for males, definitely. And then for females, remember, we learned the, um, uh, the proper etiquette and the khimar and the shawl that needs to be covered for females. So definitely dressed properly for salah as well. And then purity, we covered that as well. Cleanliness. Yes, it means wudu as well. But it also means purity as in like no najasa or no impure substances on our clothes, on our body, 
or on the place that we are praying. Okay? So these are just a few conditions that we should be aware of and we should make sure that we are fulfilling before we are praying our salah. And now it is time for a quick quiz based on what we did last week and more specifically what we did on Sunday. So are we all ready? Don't worry, it's very easy, inshallah, and it will serve as a very good review or reminder of what was done. If you are ready, then write yes or write one in the chat. I have a few yeses, good. All right, let's see who is fastest in answering, inshallah. The first question is, this hadith, I saw the messenger of Allah performing prayer. And when he bowed, he made his back so straight that if dash, it would have stayed there. Fill in the blank. What goes in here? The, the, his back was so straight that if it would have stayed there. Yes. Inshallah, I can see some. Oh, very good. That if water were poured on it, it would have stayed there. Well done. You all had the correct answer. Alhamdulillah. Can you imagine that, by the way? Water. If water was to be poured on someone's back, the back is so straight, so still, that the water would have stayed there. Maybe we can try that. Yes? And even with an object, did you try, um, because that was one of the tasks from last week, were you able to um, put something on your back while you were doing ruku and see if it stayed there? Because that is an indication that your ruku was straight. All right, good. Alhamdulillah. That's amazing. Next, what are two things wrong with this person's ruku? One of them is very easy because we just covered it. Okay, so two things wrong. What are two things wrong in this ruku? I need two answers. Okay, it's too low. It doesn't have a straight back. Yes, good. Arms, hand. Looking at the feet, back too low. Eyes, yes, looking down, no straight back, good. So you all are on the right track, okay? That yes, the back is not straight. It is like a slide, yep, it's like it's slanted. And the arms are bent at the elbows, so giving them this crooked look, not proper posture. Yep, that basically sums everything up. Okay, so our back should be straight. Remember, the prophet's back was so straight that if water was poured on it, it would have stayed there. And the arms should be stretched out straight. They should not be bent at the elbows. Okay? So these are the two things that is wrong in this person's ruku. Make sure we are not doing them, inshallah. And I'm loving how detailed the answers are. Well done. Okay, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri narrated, Allah's messenger said, one salah is not accepted unless one dash in ruku and sujood. Again, same line of, Yes, very good. Very, very obvious and um, clear answer is unless one straightens their back in ruku and sujood. And the reason why we are emphasizing this so many multiple times is so that we know exactly the importance of straightening the back during ruku. You might say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm too young, I'm too old, I have this issue, that issue. But try your best to straighten your back in ruku because we see that salah is not accepted. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's back was so straight. Yep. Okay, so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the worst of the theft, or the worst stealing is when one steals from? Mm -hmm. Well done, yes. When one steals from his salah. Very good. When one steals from his own salah, and then... The companions asked, how does one do that? And then he replied, yep, I can see that you already are answering that. What is the next part of this hadith? What is called stealing from salah? By not performing. Okay, we'll do, um, think of one of the steps. It's the, well, two of the steps, yes. By not performing ruku and sujood properly. And that could, yes, include that the back is not straight, the arms are bent, the hands are wrong positioning, and so on. So if we are not performing ruku and sujood in salah, we are, astaghfirullah, may Allah protect, stealing the worst form of stealing, which is from our own salah. We can confidently say that I don't actually steal in real life, but what about in salah, which is quite real as well, yes? Okay, now, which hand positioning from these three is correct in ruku? 
which hand positioning is the correct one to have when we are bowing, when we are in Ruku? Yes, and the answer is actually the second one, the middle one, right? Because the uh, the fingers need to be spread out. Over here, the finger, fingers are not spread out. And over here, they're also not spread out and the arms are bent, okay? So the middle one is actually how we should be putting our hands in Rukur, inshallah. Okay, so spreading the fingers out. And today, as we will learn, the Prophet in Ruku, he would spread his fingers out and in sujood, he would keep them together. Okay? All right, now, so the feet positioning, yes, just, this is not a quiz question, just for our own knowledge. In uh, Qiyam and in Salah, our feet positioning has to be moderate. Yes, not too, not too much and not too less. A way that you can um, judge if your feet positioning is correct is align it with the width of your so shoulders, okay? So if you're like, you should basically keep your legs, the amount or the length or the width of your shoulders as far apart as your shoulders are, keep that as your feet as well. So that is a good um, key or a good guide of how to keep your feet positioning in salah. Now I have a question for you. What about the eye positioning? Where should our eyes be when we are praying? Should we be looking at the other person? Should we be looking at the imam? Should we be looking where? Yes, mashallah, brother Nisa, at sujood. The eyes should be at the place of prostration. And if they are not, then what? Well, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet about one's looking here and there during the prayer. And he replied, it is what shaitan steals from the prayer or of any of you. So if you are not looking at the place of sujood and you are looking either like here and there, then um, that is shaitan stealing from your prayer. Okay, so you don't want you don't want shaitan to be stealing from your prayer, right? So make sure that you are not looking here and there. And then Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Prophet said, What is wrong with those people who look towards the sky during prayer? And his talk grew stern. So he was giving um he was giving this talk and he became very serious. And he said they should stop looking towards the sky during prayer. Otherwise, their eyesight would be taken away. Subhanallah. Okay, so if you are looking up or if you are looking out somewhere, that is very, very strong statement, right? We should not be doing that at all, inshallah. So eyes should be very properly focused on the pray place of sujood, okay? Because most of the acts, we know that what we should be doing, but we don't know what is the consequence if we are not doing them, okay? So we have learned about hand positioning in ruku. We have learned about feet positioning generally in the salah and also the eye positioning, okay? So make sure you are taking these off while you are praying. Now, we had learned some extra duas of ruku and qawma in our, to, write, to recite in our salah last week. Is there anyone who would like to come and recite any of the du'as that they practiced or implemented in their salah? Yes, Brother Salim and Rayyan, go for it. Very good, mashallah. So I believe you were doing this one. Subhana lil jabaruti wal malakuti wal kibriyai wal azama. Well done, mashallah. Allahumma barik. Yes, Sister Farzana. Allahumma lak Allahumma laka rakatu wa bika amantu wa laka aslamtu khasha laka sami wa basari well done, mashallah. And I know that this the last one is a bit tricky because it has so many different similar sounding words. But well done. Allahumma laka raka'atu wa bika amantu wa laka aslamtu khasha'a laka sam'i wa basari wa mukhi wa azmi wa asabi. Well done, mashallah, Sister Farzana. Okay, anyone else who would like to recite? What about the dua for qawma? Very easy, very simple. 
Anyone would like to recite that if they had implemented it in their salah? Yes, brother Sarah, one again. Well done. Alhamdulillah. Yes. So, Hamdan kathiran tayyibam mubarakan feed. This is after we say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, Hamdan kathiran tayyibam mubarakan feed. So, well done, everyone. These were the three duas that we had covered. Subhana lil jabaruti wal malakuti wal kibriya'i wal azama. Okay. That's one, ruk one that we can say in ruku. And Allahumma lak, Allahumma laka raka'atu, wa bika amantu, wa laka aslamtu, khasha alaka sam'i, wa basari, wa mukhi, wa azmi, wa asabi. And then, Rabbana wa laka alhamd, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan feeh. We say this after we have arisen from ruku' and before we are going to go down in sajda. Speaking of sajda, that is the step that we will be covering today, inshallah. Okay, so just with the du'as, make sure you learn them and you're also familiar with their meanings. They are sent in the WhatsApp group, so you can inshallah make benefit of them from there. And at the end, we will compile a document and send that to you of these extra du'as, which you can print out, laminate, um, and keep with you inshallah to implement. All right, so now we are starting the salah step of sajda and jalsa. What's a jalsa? Jalsa is the sitting in between the two sujood. And it is important to be familiar with such terms, Arabic terms of the prayer, like sajda, jalsa, qiyam, ruku', qawma. What was qawma? Qawma was the standing up after we have performed ruku'. It is when we say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. So that is called qawma. Okay. All right, now sajda. What is the importance and value of sujood? It is a very, very important part of our prayer, but why? Madan bin Talha reported, I met Thoban, the free slave of Allah's messenger, and asked him to tell me about an act. If I do it, then Allah will admit me to Jannah. Or I asked him along the lines of something that was most loved by Allah. And he said that the Prophet wasallam said, make frequent prostrations before Allah. Do more sujood. Because, and listen to this, because you will not make one prostration, one sajda, without raising you a degree because of it and removing a sin from you because of it. Did you know that? That every time you do sajda, two things are happening. Number one, you are being raised a daraja. You are being raised a degree because of your sajda. And a sin is being erased, being removed from your records. So make sure that we are Lo loving doing sujood. We are frequent in doing sujood because these are its benefits. And Rabaiya bin Kaab said, I was with Allah's messenger one night and I bought him water and what he required. So he was serving the Prophet and he bought him his water and other things that he required. And the Prophet says, said to him, ask me anything you like. And he said, I ask your company in Jannah. And the Prophet said, anything else beside it? And he said, that is all that I require. So he just wanted the company of the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah. So what did the Prophet say? He said, then help me achieve this for you by devoting yourself often to prostration. So by doing more frequent sujood, help me achieve this for you by you doing more sujood for yourself. So if we would like to have the company of the Prophet in Jannah, subhanAllah, how amazing is that? Sometimes in this world, we might like to have the company of our good friends, of a certain person, or maybe someone who's more popular. But what about the company of the Prophet wasallam in Jannah? That is, so we can do that by doing proper sujood and emphasis on proper as well. Okay, because we learn about ways that are incorrect for sajda and how to properly do it, inshallah. So in sajda, after we have said Allahu Akbar and we are in this position, we say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Glory, glory be to my Lord, the Most High. And in ruku, we would say Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Okay, And in sajda, we say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. It is mandatory to say this at least once. 
we cannot do sajda and ruku without saying this in our salah. Okay, so these du'as like this. Um, so one is the limit, one is the limit, and then it, one is the minimum, and then the sky is the limit for saying this du'a. So if you want, you can say as many times as you can, but one is the minimum. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la in sajda, and Subhana Rabbi al Azim in ruku. Okay, now some important points. So this is again like a checklist, okay? So look at this and see if you are doing this or not in your sajda. Important points for sujood. The nose and the forehead should be touching the ground. Sometimes we lift the nose up a little bit. It's just levitating above the floor. It should not be, it should be touching. So the nose and the forehead should be touching the ground. And both the palms, yes, should be on the floor with their fingers together. In ruku, the fingers were spread out. In sajda, the fingers are together. They are compacted. And we can place the palms or our hands either next to our shoulder or close to our ear. Okay, so again, the range between the so shoulder and the ear. Okay, the palms should be in that positioning with the fingers together. The elbows, the two elbows should not be touching the floor. Okay, so like this person over here, their elbows are not touching the floor. They are not flat on the floor. And we will see why we should not be doing that, inshallah, further on. The two knees should be on the floor. Okay, of course, we shouldn't be doing other something else without the knees on the floor. The knees should be on the floor. And the heels should be touching together. This is a very important one. Um, along with the toes of the feet being upright and not lying flat on the floor. These two, five and six, are very important in terms of our feet positioning because our our toes need to be curved like this, okay? They should be straight up and curved, not flat, right? We shouldn't be putting them flat on the floor. And our heels, what is the heel? It is the back part of our foot, okay? Those two should be touching together. Sometimes we keep them far apart or sometimes our feet are not touching the floor. They are hovering above the floor. That is also incorrect. Okay, so the toes should be upright, the, the, they should be curved and should be like facing towards the qibla along with our fingers, and the heels should be touching together. Okay, such that should be done on seven bones. Number one is the forehead on the nose, so the face, forehead, and nose. Number two is the two hands, the two knees, and the two feet or our toes. So these are seven points the nose and the forehead, the two hands, the two knees and the two feet. These seven bones should be touching the floor and should be placed firmly on the floor when we are doing sujood. And remember, back should also be straight. We learned that whoever does not straighten their back during sajda and ruku, their salah is not accepted. And if someone is not doing sujood and ruku properly, then that is the worst form of stealing from the prayer. So let's look at a few incorrect demonstrations or visuals to help us understand some wrong things. So here, what is what is wrong with this person? And you can look at the circles. What is wrong with this person? Yes, it's wrong, but what's wrong based on what we covered here? Which important point is not being fulfilled over here? Look at this. If we get confused, look at these circles. We are looking at this boy over here. What's wrong with his sajda? Yes, well done, Sister Hiba. His feet are separated or the heels are not touching together. The heels should be touching together. Okay. What about this person here? What's wrong with them? Yeah. And yes, it's their feet. What's specifically wrong with their feet? The toes, Hisasana. Well done. The toes are not curved, right? They are not properly upright and not facing the qibla. Okay. They are just flat on the floor. And if we we are doing this, we should not be putting our toes or our feet flat on the floor like that. They should be curved and should be standing upright. Okay? So this is something wrong with this person says. Now, what about this one here? Yes, the nose. Well done, Sister Sana. The nose is not touching and the eyes are looking somewhere else. Okay? And the, not only the eyes, but the nose is not touching on the floor. Okay? And the hands. Look at the hands. They are not aligned in the range between the shoulders and the ears, okay? They are too back. They are like uh, aligned with their stomach. Yes, and that should not be the case. So over here, it's the nose and the hand positioning. What about here? Very obvious. Yes, well done, Brother Isa, Sister Hanan, Sister Sabah. 
Satasana, that's the elbows are on the floor. The elbows should not be touching the floor at all. They should be upright and our arms should be spread away from our body. We shouldn't be joining our arms to our sides and just prostrating very like compacted. It should be spread out. Our biceps, our arms should be away from our sides and our stomach should not be touching our thighs. Our stomach should not be touching our thighs, right? So we should spread ourselves out during sajda and not do sajda like, you know, like a small compacted sajda, okay? So remember, feet and feet should be upright, not flat on the floor. Heels should be touching. Nose should be touching the ground. Elbows should not be touching the ground, okay? Elbows should be not lying flat, but they should be up and the arms away from our body. All right, so all these things like this checklist over here, inshallah, our task will be to make sure that we are taking each and every one of these steps off. Because remember, if we are not doing that, our salah is danger at danger of not only being invalid, not accepted, and also us performing the worst form of theft, which none of us want to be doing, right? Um, and also one of the other hadith that we covered um, last week was that if a person dies in the state that they are not performing the, the sajda and the ruku properly, and it wasn't a hadith, it was a, um, a saying of one of the sahaba, he said that if you die in the manner that you are not performing sajda and ruku properly, you will die on a religion other than that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa One of the sahaba said this to the other sahaba, Sahabi who was not performing the ruku and sajda properly. Subhanallah, right? So again, there is a great importance on fulfilling the steps of salah properly. Now, look at this, not prostrating like animals. What's that? Let's find out. Abu Huraira reported, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, when one of you prostrates himself, so when one of you does sajda, he must not kneel in the manner of a camel but should put down his hands before his knees. Has anyone seen a camel kneeling? That's my question to you. Why is it be, being compared to a camel? If he must not, he, if he must kneel, if he must kneel, he must not kneel in the manner of a camel, but he should put down his hands before his knees. All right, question, yes or no? Has anyone seen a camel kneeling before? Yes, okay. If you haven't, then here you go. <laughs> this is how a camel kneels or sits down. What is going first? The knees. And what's happening is that they're lying flat. So majority of scholars say that we should not be putting our knees before our hands. There are some scholars that do say that it is allowed, but we learn from this hadith that it is better to put our hands first because camels kneel down like this. They will go down with their knees first, okay? So this is how a camel kneels. We should be avoiding that. Now, the next animal, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned, observe moderation in prostration and let none of you stretch out his forearms on the ground like a dog. This is the point about the elbows. Yes, our elbows and our arms should not be touching the floor like a dog. This is how a dog sits like. And if we are stretching out our um, arms like this in sajda, what are we resembling? We are resembling dogs. And we should not be prostrating like animals. Okay, so the camel was mentioned first. And now a dog, okay, because of this elbow. So this is kind of like if we were to say this is the elbow of the dog. It is touching the floor, along with its arms being spread out. Only our palms, right, from our fingers to just before our wrist, only that should be on the floor, not like a dog over here. And then lastly, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited to peck like a crow in sajda and to spread the forearms like a wild beast, like a dog, like we mentioned, and to fix the place in the masjid like a camel fixes his place. Okay, so the point about pecking like a crow which means doing sajda really, really quickly, rushing through sajda, one sajda, two sajda, with like maybe a few seconds in between. Why is that not allowed? Because this is how crows or birds peck. And we 
should not be doing our sajdas, our sujood like this. They're so quick. There is barely a few second time that their floor, that their head is touching this floor or this surface. So we shouldn't be doing our sajda so quick that we are resembling a bird. All right. Is that clear? These were the three ways, just some examples of what not to do in sajda. So we have covered the main points of sajda. We have covered a few things not to be doing. All right. And now after we have gotten up from our second sujood, then, well, after we have gotten up from our first sajda, then this is called jalsa, the sitting between the two sujood. Okay. And we sit on the left thigh with the left foot on the ground and the right foot is upright. And the toes of the right foot should be facing the qibla. The hands should be on the knees and we should say three times, Rabbil firli, oh Allah, forgive me. Me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. This is called jalsa. Okay? Jalsa is iftirash, is the sitting between two sujood. This is called jalsa iftirash, for your information. And correct, yes, correct, yes. Feet positioning over here, incorrect. They shouldn't be towered on top of each other. We shouldn't be sitting on both our feet. We should be sitting on our left foot. And the right foot should be upright. Not like this, where we're not sitting on any of our feet and we're just placing our backside on the floor. Not like that. Okay, like this. This is the proper way to sit in jalsa. Okay, jalsa iftirash, sitting between the two sujood. And then is the second sajda. So after we have done our first sajda, we get up, that is jalsa iftirash, and then we go down for the second sajda, in which we say subhanallah rabbi al-a'la as well, minimum one time. And then if we are getting up for another raka'ah, if we are getting up for another rak'ah, then before we go up, the Prophet, one of the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, was that he would sit for a few moments before getting up. That was jalsa istiraha. Okay, just before you get up for another rak'ah, you sit and then get up. Jalsa istiraha, that's that one. Yes, the qibla is the direction where the Kaaba is, correct. So our qibla is where we face in salah and we face the Kaaba. All right, any questions to do with sajda or jalsa before we go on to extra du'as that we can recite in sajda? Because our first aim is to correct the steps of salah. So anything, if you want to beautify anything, number one, what you do is that you take out the things that are wrong. Okay. So in our sajda, if we want to beautify our salah, we remove the mistakes that we are doing. And the second way to beautify something is by adding beauty to it by adding extra things to it and this is what we do in when we are adding more du'as to our salah to further beautify it inshallah now these are some du'as that can be recited in ruku and to do it both okay so buhum quddusu rabbul malaikati wal ruh and subhanak allahumma rabbana wa bihamdik allahumma ghfirli can be recited both when we are doing ruku and then when we are doing sujood as well. Okay, so all glorious, all holy, Lord of the angels and the spirit. You will see, subhanAllah, in salah, there is so much exalting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much praise of Allah is going on. And then, exalted are you, O Allah, our Lord. And by your praise, O Allah, forgive me. Okay, so these are du'a that can be recited in ruku and sujood. Okay, so before we go on to the next one, would anyone like to recite these du'as just for their pronunciation? Yes, Brother Sarah and Rian, go for it. <laughs> Very good, yes. All right, I'm not sure if I heard the second one correctly. Would you like to try again? Well done, much more clear, alhamdulillah. Okay, so these are the du'as du that we can recite in ruku and sujood, inshallah, both. 
Now, what about in sajda? Okay, and then yes, you can have, keep your hands up, you will get a chance to recite these as well, inshallah. Um, all right, so if you are not able to position the feet between the sajda, as was shown, so between the sajda, which is the jalsa, that is a sunnah. Okay, so inshallah, your salah is still valid, but do try your best, inshallah, because we want to be following the sunnah, yes? If you cannot, for a valid reason, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our situation best, and he is the all-merciful. Um, but inshallah, we can be trying our best. But inshallah, salah is still valid in, jal in jalsa, which is the sitting between the two sujood. Okay, now a dua for sajda specifically is Allahumma ghfir li dhambi kullahu diqqahu wa jillahu wa awwalahu wa akhirahu wa alaniyatahu wa sirrahu. Oh Allah, now look at this beautiful dua about forgiveness of sins. Oh Allah, forgive me all my sins, great and small. First and last, open and secret. SubhanAllah. What a description, what a variety of sins, yes? Oh Allah, forgive me all of my sins, great and small, big and small, first and last, open and secret. Allahumma ghfirli dhambi kullahu diqqahu wa jillahu wa awwalahu wa akhirahu wa alaniyatahu wa sirrahu. SubhanAllah. Yes, Sister Naima. Would you like to recite this da? Yes, well done. Kullahu and wa ala niyatahu wa sirrahu. Well done. Alhamdulillah. This is a very beautiful dua to be reciting in sajda. And sajda, sajda specifically, is an act of ibadah or a place or a position where we are closest to our Rabb. We are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda. So why not ask Allah sincerely to forgive our sins? Inshallah. Okay. Allahumma ghfir li dhambi kullahu diqqahu wa jillahu wa awwalahu wa akhirahu wa alaniyatahu wa sirrahu. And yes, it does have a lot of terminologies. But if we look at it in terms of the meaning, it will be even more beautiful and easy to um, recite, inshallah. And this is a bit of a longer one, but subhanAllah, amazing meanings as well. Allahumma a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatik wa a'udhu bika mink la uhsi fana'an alayk anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. O oh Allah, indeed I seek refuge with your pleasure from your wrath and with your forgiveness from your punishment. And I seek refuge with you from you. I cannot count your praise. You are as you have praised yourself. How humble, yes? That we are saying, oh Allah, it is not in our ability to be praising you. You are, you are as you have praised yourself. SubhanAllah. Would anyone like to recite this? Allahumma a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatik wa a'udhu bika mink la uhsi thana'an alayk anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Okay, and yes, these are long du'as, but they will take some time to memorize, but they will beautify our prayer, inshallah. Yes, Brother Isa. Allahumma a'udhu اللهم أعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وأعوذ, ب... وأعوذ بك من... منك لا أحصي سناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك Well done, mashallah, good job Yes, it has a few hard terminologies but very good, mashallah Alright, the last one before we move on to the Tajweed segment and these du'as, this variety of du'as has been presented to you so you can choose which one you want to include in your prayer. The more you do, the better it is. Again, the sky is the limit, but we should be um, including at least one of these du'as in our salah, inshallah. Okay? Allahumma laka sajadtu, wa bika amantu, wa laka aslamtu, sajada wajhi lilladhi khalaqahu, wa sawwarahu, wa shakka sam'ahu, Again, O oh Allah, it is to you that I prostrate myself, and it is in you that I affirm my faith, and I submit to you. 
My face is submitted before the one who created it and shaped it and opened his facilities of hearing and seeing. Blesses Allah, the best of creators. Aren't these such beautiful words that you want to be saying in your salah? Because it shows humility. It shows beauty. It shows love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows recognition of how he has created us. This face that we are prostrating in front of Allah, it is the same one who he created, who he shaped, and he and what he allowed us to hear from it, to see from it, and to do so many of these things, subhanAllah. Exactly, right? So we would love to say these words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why not beautify our sujood? It is loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is closer to Allah, closest to Allah. And um, if we do it frequently, then we hope that Allah will also make our company with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an honor, right? Okay, so would anyone like to recite any one of these du'as before we go on to tajweed? We'll just take a few volunteers before we do tajweed. And then you can have an opportunity to recite the surah as well today that we are doing, if time permits. Which... Um, dua would you like to recite or maybe a dua that you um, find is very beautiful and you would like to recite the meaning of it yes sister Farzana Allahumma gfirli zambi kullahu dikahu wa jillahu wa awalahu wa akhirahu wa lam wa ala niyatahu wa sirrahu Yes, wa'alaniya. So the man is on the lamb, wa'alaniya tahu wa sirru. Wa'alaniya. Yeah, so, a, wa, a, la, wa'ala. So short a and then la long. Wa'alaniya tahu. Wa'alaniya tahu. Wa sirru. Well done, yes, better, mashallah. All right, jazakillahu khairan. Um, yes, sister Aisha. Which dua? Uh, this, this one. Same one, yes. Go. Well done, yes. Well done, mashallah. Well done. Jazakallahu khairan. Alhamdulillah, we are able to um, recite all these. Um, Du'as, if we are able to recite them now, then inshallah, we can also recite them in our salah. So these are a few short ones that we can do in both, ruku and sujood. This is only in sajda, and, and this one, and this one. These all will be sent on the group so that you can familiar familiarize yourself with them and their meaning, and inshallah, include them in your salah, in your sajda. All right, so today we are doing from Surah at takathur to al bayina Now, let's get started into it. And if time permits, then we can also have um, volunteers to, inshallah, recite them. All right, Surah at takathur We will go over it quickly and just a few points to note, because most of us have already memorized these surahs, just have a few tweaking, maybe in terms of makharij or articulation points. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الهاكم التكاثر Okay, now tha is a very easily confused with seen. We might be saying التكاثر الهاكم التكاثر No, الهاكم التكاثر tha حتى زرتم المقابر Okay, ra heavy زرتم المقابر قاف is heavy المقابر We shouldn't be saying المكابر المقادير كلا سوف تعلمون سوف not going halfway and saying سوف كلا سوف no كلا سوف كلا سوف تعلمون and then again ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين the عين okay not uh, confusing it with a همزة now, wow, making sure we're not saying like the English V, letter of Vunna, not letter of Vunna, letter of Wu. Wow, no teeth are being involved. 
لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين عين and again wow ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم so يوم إي همزة and then عين يوم إذ عن النعيم again عين alright so similar sounding letters we should definitely be focusing on them inshallah alright القارعة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة and this word القارعة قاف heavy الراء is light and then عين should be pronounced properly we shouldn't be confusing it with either a hamza or a ya القارئة or القارية not القارية and not القارئة it's القارية عين okay and this mad over here وما أدراك را heavy ما القارية يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث كالفرا را heavy كالفراش المبثوث and these both are ثا not seen so not saying المبثوث but saying المبثوث ثا and ثا and then وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش عين كالعهن not كالإهن كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازين okay فأما من ثا not ثقلت but ثا light soft ثقلت موازين فهو في عيشة راضية عين and then را عيشة راضية ضا not like a دال عيشة الراضية no عيشة الراضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية and then وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية so this is ها نار حامية making sure we're not confusing it with ها alright العاديات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاديات ضبحة ضا okay not saying ضبحة ضا ضا والعاديات ضبحة فالموريات قدحة okay دال again قلقلة and قاف not saying كدحة like a cat but قا قد قدحة فالموريات قدحة فالمغيرات صبحة فالمغيرات صب صاد not saying صب like a scene but صب صبحة فأثرنا همزة in ثا not seen فأثرنا فأثا فأثرنا به نقعا قلقلة in عين فوسطنا سين طاهبي به جمعا not doing قلقلة in the meme and saying جمعا not like that okay جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على عين ذلك ذا not saying ذلك but ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد حا أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر عين عين أن ثا بعثر not saying بعثر بعثر ما في القبور وحصل صاد ما في الصدور again صاد إن ربهم بهم يوم إذ لخبير يوم إذ okay not saying يوم but يوم يوم إذ ذال not ذا a few things to take note of سورة الزلزلة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها so these are all ذا okay وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها ثا make sure it's not أثقالها أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ again same thing يومئذ تحدث not تحدث تحدث أخبارها 
Hamza should be kept light. It's easy to say, oh, oh. It's not, oh, keep the kha heavy, yes, but make the Hamza light. Akhbaraha. Bianna rabbaka awha laha. Bianna. Nasal sound. Rabbaka awha laha. Look over here, ha and ha. So make sure they're not both ha or both ha. One, the first one ha, second one ha. أو حالها يوم إذن يصدر الناس صاد and seen make them different أشتا تلي رو أعمالهم همزة and عين أع أعمالهم okay أشتا تلي رو أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال not مثقال مثقال ذرة ذرة خيرا يرى okay. مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى and over here خيرا you cannot say خير but خير خيرا يرى and then شرا يرى Okay, last surah for today. Al-Bayyina. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And by the way, think of which surah you would like to recite from the ones that we have covered. We will, I think, have time to take a few people, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Lam yakuni al-lazina. Al-lazina. Not al-lazina. Al-lazina. Okay. Lam yakuni al-lazina kafaru. من أهل الكتاب والمشركين كاف نا والمشركين والمشركين مفكين كاف حتى تأتيهم البينة. Make sure this همزة is prominent. We shouldn't be saying حتى تأتيهم البينة. حتى تأتيهم البينة. In حفص in our citation we should not be saying تأتيهم. It's تأتيهم. Make همزة prominent. حتى تأتيهم البينة. رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة. صحو. صاد هبي. حا light. ميم light. طا هبي. صحوف صحوفا مطهرة. را هبي. فيها كتب قيمة. Over here, the nasal sound is heavy because of the qaf. فيها كتب قيمة. وما تفرق الذين الذين أوتوا الكتاب إلا من بعد ما جاءتهم البينة. The ya over here. Not making it too heavy and saying like a j sound. البينة. No, البينة. And then, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَيْن لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ صَالِ خا um, So basically, look, ميم light, خا heavy, لام light, صاد heavy. مُخْلِصِينَ Make sure we are keeping the heavy letters heavy and the light letters light. مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حنفاء ويقيم الصلاة الص الصلاة ويؤت الزكاة وذلك not وذلك وذلك دين القيمة إن الذين كفروا الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين في نار جهنم خالدين فيها أولئك هم شر البرية راء هير هبي شر البرية إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات صاد هبي أولئك هم خير البرية أجن خير البرية Last ayah, جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنة عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار. So a lot of nasal sounds. الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا 
رضي الله عنهم را and ضاد both heavy رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك not ذلك ذلك لمن خشي ربه all good all right so just a few things to note inshallah who would now like to recite um these ayat all right brother Ibrahim first one surah al bayina yes let's scroll all the way up um, I think it's best. Maybe you can raise your hand in the chat and which surah you would like to do. That's a better way. Zakallahu khairan for setting the standard. Brother Ibrahim, go for it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Lam yakunil lazina kafaru min ahli al-kitabi wal mushtikina mufakkina hatta ta'tiyahumu al-bayyina. رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة فيها كتب قيمة وما تفرق الذين أوتوا الكتاب إلا من بعض ما جاءتهم البينة وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء. Again, it's مخلصين صين مخلصين مخلصين له الدين حنفاء ويقيم الصلاة ويؤت الزكاة وذلك دين القيمة. إن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين في نار جهنم خالدين فيها أولئك هم شر البرية. Good. So just if you are stopping here, not too long. Just be here two counts. Well, good. Well done. إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم وردوا عن ذلك لمن خشي ربه. Well done, ما شاء الله. You have very clear مخارج. الحمد لله. Just to hear تجري من جنة وعدن. It sounded like عدن, like a فتح. But just إن شاء الله keep that in mind for next time. But well done, brother Ibrahim. May Allah protect you and preserve. Of you, inshallah. Because we just had Al Bayina, can we do Al Adiyat? We have in the chat, um, Brother Hisham, Al Adiyat. I think we might have time for just that. Let's see. Yes. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Wal Adiyat dabha, fal Muriyat qadha, fal Mughirat subha, fa asan bihi naqa, fa wasatn bihi jama. إن الإنسان لربه لكنوت وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بؤسر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير very good. Nasal sound very good over here. And your ayin is very nice, mashallah. Just over here, idha bu'athira again. Idha bu'athira ma fil qubur. Very good. Yep, yep. Jazakallahu khairan, brother Hisham. Well done. May Allah protect you and preserve you as well. And all of the youth, may Allah allow us, allow you all to become great reciters of the Quran, inshallah. And please him with your voices and your actions. Ameen. Jazakumallahu khairan, everyone. Sorry about those who weren't able to get a tan, inshallah, tomorrow, because I will be seeing you tomorrow, inshallah. May Allah allow us to perfect our prayers and beautify them and reward us and increase our darajat and admit us to Jannah, inshallah. Jazakumallahu khairan, everyone. Barakallahu feekum, fatahallahu alaykum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته